Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Kumar and today I will be speaking on USG guided FNAC. So what are the objectives of this video? First is to understand the preparation and technique for FNA to improvise in different scenarios with useful tips. Avoid common errors and pitfalls in the procedure. To encourage people to do more USG guided FNAs henceforth. It is a method of obtaining cellular material for cytological diagnosis using image guided techniques like ultrasound. So why do we use USG guidance? It is live, dynamic, easily reproducible, relatively cheap, easily available, devoid of radiation and has an excellent yield. So why have we given up blind procedures? Because ultrasound is extremely accurate we know we are hitting the lesion and only the lesion and it is also devoid of major complications as damage to adjacent important tissues is minimal. So which part or lesion in the body can be effinate? Technically any lesion which can be seen on ultrasound can be effinate. So what are the prerequisites for an FNA? We will be requiring needles, syringes, slides, coplin and slide holding jars antiseptic solution, alcohol swabs and material for painting and draping. Generally no obvious preparation is required for the patient except for shaving the concerned area for FNA. In deeper solid organ lesions it is imperative to do a bleeding or clotting profile including a prothrombin time and INR. Always monitor the vitals of the patient before the procedure like pulse, BP and oxygen saturation. Some people advocate giving injection atropine 30 minutes before the procedure to avoid vasovagal problems. So the most important aspect is the choice of the needle. In India, across the spectrum, the commonly used needle for FNA is a 23 or a 24 gauge needle, either which is 1 or 1 and a half inch long. Obvious reason behind being, it helps in optimal aspiration of cellular material. The larger gauge which are the thinner needles uh, more than 25-26 gauge lead to non-aspiration and lack of cellularity. On the contrary, smaller gauge needles below 21 paradoxically lead to more failure as there is increased hemodilution leading to excess blood in the diameter of the needle. So I generally prefer a 23 gauge needle which is one and a half inch long for most of my FNAs. For deeper tissues, especially in abdominal cases, I generally prefer a spinal 23 needle after withdrawing the stilet. One good habit is before starting the procedure, you should scan the patient thoroughly to localize the lesion and its distance from the skin surface where the needle will enter. Two common ways of doing an FNA. One is the longitudinal method and other is the transverse method. The transverse method is the less common method used where the needle is advanced from the center of the probe and only the cross section of the needle is seen during the procedure. The longitudinal method is commonly used and in this case the needle is put from the side of the probe and the needle should be parallel to the beam of ultrasound to see the entire length of the needle. The longitudinal method is commonly used because it is safer for the patient, the needle is seen in toto and it reassures the doctor of sampling from the appropriate site. Now once we localize the lesion on ultrasound using the probe, we use the other hand to pass the needle from the side of the probe. Once we enter the skin, we continuously scan to locate the advancing tip. Once inside the lesion, we should keep the probe stable without changing the angle, do back and forth multiple around 10 to 12 passes, which are about 2 to 3 passes per second for obtaining optimum cellularity. Once this is done, we withdraw the needle completely, flush the needle on the slides using negative pressure, fix the slide using formalin and transport to the pathologist as soon as possible. Now there are two methods of doing an FNA. One is the aspiration technique and other is the non-aspiration method. The commonly used is the non-aspiration technique where we tease the needle back and forth without applying any 
pressure from the syringe. Cells are collected in the needle hub using the capillary action. Aspiration technique is a less commonly used technique and as the name goes, we use negative pressure created in the syringe to aspirate cells. Aspiration technique can be useful in select cases like when non-aspiration fails, in hard or highly cellular lesions, or in case of complex cystic lesions where we need to remove the fluid. Both techniques are used successfully, but I generally prefer the non-aspiration technique as I am more comfortable with it. Now, let me discuss few scenarios which we commonly encounter. First and very common with our colleagues is they see the needle when it enters the skin, but somehow the needle is lost when it is, when it is advanced towards the lesion. Few doctors even blindly agitate and complete the FNA and prepare smears. This is absolutely not recommended. Some doctors panic, move the needle and the probe in a haphazard manner and in the end are not able to track the needle. So what can be done in such cases? First is to mildly withdraw the needle, keep scanning continuously, either move the probe or the needle but not both. This is a very important point. And once the needle is visualized, maintain the same probe position and angle and carry on with the FNA. Second scenario for many beginners and novices is many a times they fail to visualize the needle in part or as a whole. In such cases, Doppler can help visualize the tip. Many machines have dual mode where grayscale and Doppler are seen side by side while doing live scanning. Whenever the needle agitates through the tissue, it creates a flash of color on Doppler, which can help track the needle and reaffirm its location. In case of superficial or small lesions, which are either 4, 5, 6 mm small, it is difficult to FNA such lesions. So what can be done in such cases? First is to use a smaller length needle like a 1 inch needle and to keep the angle when we insert through the skin acute or shallow so that we get maximum needle into lesion. Exactly opposite is done for deeper and larger lesions. Now case scenario number four, what to do when there is a complex cystic lesion? Many people get stuck while doing FNA for such lesions. In such a scenario, always first aspirate the entire fluid and then FNA from the remaining solid part and not vice versa. And also important thing is to send the fluid as well as slides for cytology. Interesting scenario is deep abdominal lesions or liver lesions in patients which are not that cooperative or have a difficult breath hold. In such cases, first just put the needle inside the lesion and do minimum back and forth movements as the breathing movements will aid in agitating the needle across the lesion and help acquire cells. Last but not the least, I will give you few important tips for successful USG guided FNSE. The most important is good knowledge of the anatomy of the lesion and adjacent structures. Therefore, prior scanning is a must. Correct position of the patient, probe and comfortable approach with ambidextrous use of hands giving local anesthesia to the patient so that the patient is comfortable during the procedure, correct needle localization and continuous dynamic scanning and also make your own slides rather than telling your assistant to do because it will avoid loss and degradation of samples.